Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are listening. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day. My name is Lee Parham. You might know me as Lego Lee or Lego Lee 329 from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, you name it. I am all over the internet, and this is the Brickology Podcast, the study of small plastic bricks. How are you doing today? I really hope you are doing well. Obviously, I've mentioned this in the last two episodes of Brickology, the coronavirus mayhem has completely encapsulated the entire planet. It's absolutely insane, and I'm not going to focus on it anymore because I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, that means you have access to the internet and you probably know what's going on. So just stay safe. Be, be precautious and make sure to wash your freaking hands, man. Now, Brickology is doing really well. The past few weeks, because people have a lot more free time in quarantine, my streams have gone up exponentially, and I'm very thankful for, the, for that. So thank you so much for supporting this show. And if you really want to support this show, check out my Patreon account. It's under Lego Lee 329 You can support me on Patreon. Even like literally a dollar a month helps me make awesome podcasts like the episode of Brickology you are about to listen to. Two. Now, let's jump straight into this week's topic. Now, I've expressed in the past that I want to keep Brickology as topical as humanly possible. Now, a lot of the episodes I had planned coincided with movies that were going to come out, but now they have been postponed due to the coronavirus outbreak. So I was going to do a Density Princess episode because of the Mulan remake, and I was going to do an Agents episode to kind of coincide the release of No Time to Die, the new James Bond movie. I I think you guys are catching on to my drift. Well, those movies aren't coming out for the foreseeable future. Some of them we don't even know when they're actually going to be coming out, coming out. So we'll have to wait and see there. So those episodes are going to be postponed just with the movies. But I do want to keep Brickology as topical as humanly possible. And even though all this madness is still going on, Lego is still producing new sets. Some sets have been delayed, but they are still producing new sets. And today, April 1st, or no, actually it was yesterday when I was recording it. Today is April. No, wait, yeah, April 1st. <laughs> April Fool's Day. It wasn't a joke, though. Lego Ideas released their newest set, the Pirates of Barracuda Bay. And I was like, that's a big set. That's an awesome set. I ordered it myself. I dropped the $200 on that set, and I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. I have not built it yet. I'm really excited to build it in my Instagram and YouTube. I'm sure we'll have a lot of cool content relating to that set. But that set just dropped. I'm super excited to build that set and I was like you know what it's time we're gonna talk about Lego pirates so today's episode of Brickology is about Lego pirates now one very quick little thing not Pirates of the Caribbean. This is Lego Pirates, the in-house original Lego pirate theme. Pirates of the Caribbean is a licensed theme through Disney. We will not be discussing the Pirates of the Caribbean sets today. However, just to make it easy, that's next week's episode. Quick little announcement. Next week's episode of Brickology will be about the Pirates of the Caribbean sets. However, today's episode of Brickology will just be about the in-house original Lego Pirates theme. Now, usually before I break down the theme, I kind of talk about what the theme is based on and what is a pirate? Do I really need to explain to you what a pirate is? The most simple, easy, elementary definition of a pirate is somebody that robs something. I mean, it's very simple to understand. There are still pirates today. There are cyber pirates. You know, there's a lot of different forms of piracy going on still in the world today. Obviously, the Lego sets are not those. Lego sets are kind of based off what we think of pirates, which is, you know, swashbuckling these crazy people back, you know, the 17th century. They have giant boats. They steal treasure. They have maps, crazy beards. We have peg legs, hook hands, eye patches. That is what Lego pirates is based off of. And I'm not going to explain any more about what a pirate actually is because that would just be way wasting your time. And the history of this theme is actually so deep that I think I need to just focus more on that than actually kind of explaining why the theme exists. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight into Lego Pirates. Now, Pirates is a very interesting theme. 
because Lego Pirates is what I would call a come and go theme. You're probably like, what, what does that mean? Now, there are evergreen themes. Two weeks ago in my episode about Ninjago, I explained what an evergreen theme is and to surmise kind of what I said a few weeks ago, an evergreen tree is a tree that remains green all seasons of the year. It's always green. So an evergreen Lego theme like Ninjago or Star Wars or City or Friends even is a theme that does not go away. Like Lego Technic, they released new Lego Technic sets every single year and they've been doing it for years. Those themes, they are mainstays. They are always around. They never get canceled or anything. They might get canceled, but for the most part, it's assumed that we're going to get new Lego Technic sets every single year. Lego Pirates is not like that. While Lego Pirates is a beloved classic Lego theme, Lego Pirates comes and it goes, kind of like the waves in the ocean, it ebbs and flows. Lego Pirates will get canceled, it's you know nowhere to be found for a decade, and then it has a resurgence and everyone gets excited again and then it gets canceled again. That's kind of what Lego Pirates is like, and it's had very many different you know, kind of incarnations over the years. Now, the first Lego Pirates theme began back in the year 1989, and something that I actually didn't even know until I started doing research for this episode, the Lego Pirate theme was the first new Lego theme in 11 years. In 1978, which was the first time we actually got Lego minifigures as well, Lego began these big three themes. You can probably name them if you're somewhat familiar with their Lego history. Those themes were city, of course, classic space, you know, Benny, spaceship, that kind of stuff, and castle. Those are like the three main Lego themes. And for pretty much the entire 1980s, that's all we got. Now, they had different subsets and sub-themes and, you know, all this crazy stuff going on, but pretty much everything fell under one of those umbrellas. It was one of those three main themes. So it took 11 years after 78 to 1989 when LEGO introduced a brand new theme, which was LEGO Pirates. And the original run of LEGO Pirates lasted from 1989 to 1997, which was the year of my birth, 97, and produced a total of 55 sets. There were no pirate sets in the year 1990, so technically it's 89 and then, then 91 through 97, but for all intents and purposes episode, 89 to 97 is how we will be referring to the run of pirate sets. So, very interesting, and a lot of people were very heartbroken when Pirates was discontinued in 97. Maybe me being born was the end for the original Lego Pirates theme. Uh, now, I digress about that because they released some pirate sets in the early 2000s, including a remake, remake, remake of the Black Seas Barracuda, and we'll talk more about that ship later on in this episode. 2004 saw a line of four plus pirate sets, and then Pirates had a more traditional reboot in 2009, and then that reboot had a reboot in 2015. And then, of course, the aforementioned Pirates of Barracuda Bay set was just released here in 2020. So, that's the weird kind of brief history of LEGO Pirates. It's a come and go theme. It really has no consistency. Well, it does have consistency within the theme itself. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But that is the very brief history of kind of what's going on with the LEGO Pirate theme. But before we break down specific sets within LEGO Pirates, we can kind of start to break down some very typical things of all these pirate sets because consistently they kind of have similar tropes going on. Now, LEGO Pirate sets are usually battles between the pirates and the Imperial soldiers, which of course are supposed to be British soldiers, they just don't use that name. I think it's very interesting that the LEGO sets portray the pirates as kind of the protagonists of of these sets because pirates, you know, in history, they aren't exactly the best people. I mean, I'm not gonna even say some of the things that pirates are really known for in real life. Let's just say they plunder, they steal, they do a lot of bad stuff, they are dirty, they are pretty gross. I mean, pirates are really not supposed to be super likable characters. So it's kind of odd that LEGO would focus on them as like the main protagonists. And then, you know, the government of British soldiers is the, you know, antagonist of these series. I find that very interesting. You know, when you look at something like LEGO Castle, 
Lego Castle, it's like obviously you root for the knights and you root against, you know, the evil black knights, but pirates, you're kind of rooting for the bad guys in some ways. But at the same time, I do feel like they are more attractive heroes than the kind of, you know, boring and vanilla British Imperial soldiers. Now, the British soldiers in these sets, they originally, originally wore traditional blue coats, which is a little more historically accurate to, you know, actual pirate battles of the past. But in 1993, they switched to red coats. Now, the red coats more coincide with, like, Revolutionary War British, British soldiers, which is a little bit different and not quite as historically accurate. But the red coat kind of stuck ever since until they actually switched back to blue coats with the most recent pirate theme in 2015 and more on that later in this episode. Now, the British soldiers, the Imperial soldiers have had a number of names throughout the series. They originally called the Imperial soldiers and they were in the Imperial guards. And then they kind of switched up the villains to be the Spanish Armada. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So in 1996, I believe they switched from the Brits to the Spaniards with the Spanish Armada. So those are kind of the villains of the pirate theme. Themes, but the pirates have also often fought off different sea creatures as well, octopuses, sharks, things like that, narwhal, you know, saw fish creatures. They have fought off those sort of creatures throughout the history of Lego pirates. And in 1994, I think the most unique antagonists in the pirate lines were introduced. And those were the Islanders, kind of this tiki themed island thing, which was a very different subset of pirate sets that is very unique in the history of pirates because the rest of pirates is very consistently kind of the same thing. And we will definitely talk about that here in just a minute because pirates is very repetitive as a theme but the native islanders line of pirate stuff was completely different from anything else lego pirates has made now one thing one thing in particular that i found very very interesting about lego pirates is that the theme is consistently grounded in some form of reality. You know, it's a little exaggerated, but it's never been fantastical. It has never been a fantasy theme. Now, a theme like Lego Castle has oftentimes been a fantasy theme. We see Lego Castle, like the 2007 reboot of Lego Castle was you know, the castle people, the knights, fighting skeleton warriors or fighting trolls. It was very fantastical. Pirates has literally always been just humans fighting humans. They come in contact with the occasional sea monster, but the sea monsters are never bigger than life. It's not like the Aqua Raiders or Atlantis sea monsters that are huge mythical creatures. Pirates, they're always just fighting things that, you know, are plausible and have existed or do still exist in the real world, which I've always found very interesting. And another interesting tidbit about Lego Pirates, it's always been known as Lego Pirates. Always Lego Pirates. And the reason I think that's interesting is Lego Castle has not always been Lego Castle. It's kind of, you know, always been stereotyped as Lego Castle, but in 2004, we had Knight's Kingdom, and then we had Lego Kingdoms at one point, and even Nexo Knights, if you count that. The same thing can be said about City. It's been known as Lego Town or Lego World City. I mean, City has had different names throughout the years, but Lego Pirates has always just been Pirates. Even when they rebooted, it's like Lego Pirates is back. They don't change the name, which I find very, very interesting. Now, one of the most important aspects of this episode, and I think the most important things we're going to discuss about Lego Pirates today, is what I'm calling the seven tropes of Lego Pirates. And what I mean by this is these seven tropes pretty much make up every single Lego Pirate set ever made. You're going to be hard pressed to find any pirate sets that do not fall into one of these different seven categories. The first one, the most obvious one, of course, is pirate ships. That's pretty obvious. We're going to talk about a lot of pirate ships throughout this episode. I don't think I need to elaborate anymore on that. The second one, which is also pretty obvious, is Imperial ships, ships to oppose the pirate ships. You know, obviously ship battles are some of the most iconic, you know, confrontations between pirates and the British Empire. Those are also very commonly seen throughout these sets. 
And then we have pirate forts, lots of pirate forts, which is kind of its own little trope, you know, pirate hideouts. And oftentimes this is the fourth trope is shipwrecks. And a lot of times these two kind of coincide. They turn the shipwreck into a pirate fort. They do that all the time. And the Barracuda base set that just came out is a perfect example of a shipwreck that has been turned into a fort. Also, pirate forts are also sometimes kind of these skull slash treasure islands, if you will. Obviously, Treasure Island is a very famous book, so it makes sense that they would capitalize on that. And a lot of times they're called like Skull Island, kind of like, you know, from King Kong. And the island is literally an island with a giant skull and the skull reveals treasure. That seems to happen all the time throughout like a pirate set. It's, it's kind of odd. It's kind of, kind of an odd thing, but there are so many different Skull Island sets from Lego Pirates in the past. Now, the last two tropes here, one is what I call the small raft trope. Kind of an odd one. This is usually one of these smaller sets from the line. It's literally just a raft. It's like, if you can't afford getting a bigger actual boat or pirate ship set, you get the small pirate raft set. And finally, last but not least, that's, you know, kind of the sister to the pirate shipwreck fort sort of trope. The seventh trope here is an imperial fortress. They always have some kind of fortress for the British soldiers. Now, those are the seven tropes of Lego pirate sets. And you're gonna be really hard pressed to find any Lego pirate sets that don't fit into those categories. I'm sure other Lego themes have similar tropes to this, but these Lego pirate sets, these sets are so repetitive over and over and over. And you're going to see in here me talk about this sort of thing throughout this episode, because now it is time to break down some Lego pirate sets. Now there's been over 80 Lego pirate sets released over the last few, you know, three decades or so, and it's gonna take way too long to break down each individual set. So obviously, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna waste your time. I'm not gonna break down every single LEGO Pirate set. If you wanna know, go to Brickset or Brickopedia. They will have all of them listed. I'm just gonna highlight some of the sets that I think need to be highlighted and kinda tell you how the theme has evolved throughout the years. So we've already mentioned 1989 was the first year for LEGO Pirates, and they had 12 different sets with the initial line of LEGO Pirates. And these sets were pretty revolutionary because these sets introduced so many new pieces. We had new accessories for the figures, obviously hook hands, peg legs, pirate hats, all sorts of things like that were brand new for the figures. And then the boats, the pirate ships themselves had brand new sail pieces, brand new pieces to make up the whole of the boats and brand new pieces for the masts, for anchors, all of this stuff, tons of awesome brand new pieces for Lego pirate sets. And these pieces are still being used today for Lego pirate sets. Now in 1989, there were a few number of impulse sets, one called Buried Treasure, one called Harbor Century, and one called Pirate Minifigures. And that was like a $6 battle pack with four different pirate minifigures, really cool little army buildable set that can 1989 and then there were some smaller sets these sets are like in the you know eight to fifteen dollar range we got the castaway raft there's our first little raft set the shipwreck island oh a shipwreck and then saber island which was like a little pirate island very cool no saber island was not a pirate island. that was a uh, imperial fortress island very cool little small sets and then there are a few big in play sets there was the forbidden island which was like the big pirate fortress and then the el dorado fortress which was the imperial base the original Original Imperial base and that is a very cool set and that set got a lot of votes as the best Lego pirate set ever made it didn't win but it did get a lot of votes and I definitely think it needs to be highlighted but then of course we got the two big ships the first one is the Caribbean Clipper a cool name and I also think it's interesting that it references a real life location obviously the Caribbean although we're still not talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, line that'll be next week this was the first Imperial ship from pirates it was a little bit smaller than the pirate ship that we'll talk about here in just a second but it was a still a very cool little ship and then of course from the original wave lego pirates we got the black sea barracuda and kind of unsurprisingly this was voted on by my fans as the best ever lego pirate set not too surprising that the best pirate set, according to my fans, is the OG original 
pirate ship. And this will be a recurring theme throughout the rest of this episode because the Black Sea Barracuda is not gonna go away. It was the first ever pirate set, pirate ship set, introduced all these pieces, had those iconic sails, unique colors. It was black and red and yellow. Very, very cool set. And of course, it introduced us to Captain Redbeard, and we will hear his name again throughout this episode. Now, let's move into the pirate sets of the 1990s. I talked about pirates going on a little weird hiatus in the year 1990, but they do return in 91 and 92, and these sets were pretty much all the same. Like seriously, like these sets, they were different, technically speaking, but they were all the same. It was the same tropes, the same sort of things just being remade over and over again, not unique in the slightest. And really the only set from the year 1992 that I think is worth mentioning is the Imperial Trading Post. This was a huge set over 800 pieces that had big, big base plate pieces. And it had kind of an Imperial base, but it also had like a little canal, some shops and a big boat included, a big sailboat included with the play set itself. That was a really cool set. It's a set I've always wanted. Unfortunately, I don't have it, but I would absolutely love to have it in my collection. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that set is freaking expensive now because it was a big set back in the day. And obviously now it's almost 30 years old. But that's a very cool set from the year 92. 93, more of the same. <laughs> like seriously, we just got a more of the same stuff. And really the only set I think that's worth mentioning from 93 is the Skull Eye Schooner. This is the second pirate ship. Obviously we had Black Sea Barracuda and then we have Skull's Eye Schooner. Now these are some very cool names. Lego actually had some really creative names for these pirate ships back in the day. It was a cool looking ship and it had the black and white sails with that were striped. That was kind of kind of like, you know, an iconic pirate flag, black and white ship, sails, very cool ship. 1994 is when the theme, I think, really tried something new. It's, this is the fifth year of the theme, and LEGO Pirates finally tried to make something more unique and different. In 94, they introduced the aforementioned Islanders, which was very tiki-oriented, very cool, very nice pieces for the Islanders, and it made for something different, and it was kind of a breath of fresh air for the pirate theme. And most of the sets here were Islander themed play sets. They were similar to things we got in the past, but they had their own unique flair and there were no more Imperial soldiers. It was all the Islanders. And they also had these cool like stone statues and even one of these stone statues is referenced in the Barracuda base set, which I promise you we're gonna talk about it even though I seem like I've mentioned it like 10 times already. So these stone Islanders, these Islander sets were very cool and definitely a breath of fresh air for the Lego pirate theme. However, at the same time, there was still pirate ships and boats and things like that. So it wasn't all original, but at least it was different because for the first four years of Lego Pirates, I think people were probably getting a little bit sick of the same thing happening over and over and over again. But in 94, we finally got something different. Now, 95 did have pirate sets. It wasn't like it was discontinued yet, but we only got four sets, and we did see the return of the Imperial Soldiers, but we, and we also got an additional Islander set, but none of these sets are unique or interesting. Really boring year, kind of a weird hodgepodge of other years. No need to focus on 95 anymore. 1996 is now when we get the Spanish Armada as the antagonists in these sets. These, of course, are kind of like Spanish conquistadors. They introduced a brand new helmet piece. Very cool figures. I've always had a weird, like, obsession with conquistadors. I think their armor is super cool. I think they have a very rich and interesting history and make for good villains for these pirate sets. Very, very very cool. And of course we got an Armada flagship, a very cool set that I definitely wish I had. And we got the third Lego big pirate ship, the Redbeard Runner. Okay, the name not quite as interesting as the last two, but it was still cool. And this one I think kind of introduced the first giant Jolly Roger sails with black and white stripes, like the iconic toy pirate ship look. This set had it. Not as cool as a name, but Redbeard returns, and it's still a pretty cool set. And then we go to the year of my birth, 1997, and only four sets were released. Those four sets literally offered nothing new, no reason to highlight any of them. And then Pirates was discontinued to many fans' dismay, 
Pirates was discontinued for the time being. It had a seven, eight-ish year run. It was a very nice run for the theme, but after 1997, Pirates didn't return until the turn of the century. In 2002, we actually got a re-release of the Black Sea Barracuda. Not a remake. We'll talk about a remake of that here in just a second. A re-release. It was pretty much the same set, just repackaged and sold again in the year 2002, which is pretty interesting and pretty cool. And I actually didn't even know that that happened back in the day. I was pretty young at the time, but we did get a re-release of that set. In 2004, we got probably the most forgettable, and maybe not forgettable, but a theme people would like to forget. It's not forgettable because it's stupid, but we got the four juniors pirate sets. Now, a lot of you might not be super aware of this. Now, Lego, in modern days, they still make sets for juniors, obviously. They have four plus sets, junior sets, whatever moniker they are, are under now. They're sets made for little kids. They're not Duplo. They're not like, you know, giant bricks Duplo level. They use real Lego bricks. However, these sets have very large pieces and very easy building techniques, no tiny parts, a lot of things kind of like pre-molded instead of actually having to build it up like a normal Lego sets. They're supposed to be easy to build. Now, this Junior's line that's been introduced a few years ago and is now you know, pretty prevalent in Lego today, that was not the original Lego Junior's line. In fact, this might not even be the 2004 you know, versions, might not even be the original Junior's line, but they did have a Junior's line before then that was you know, a step ahead of Duplo, but a step below the normal Lego system. And they were called Jack Stone. It was this weird kind of city-ish theme. And the figures, man, they weren't minifigures. They were this weird figure that was taller than a minifigure. It had a specially molded head. They had noses. You couldn't take them apart, but they still functioned like normal Lego figures. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up a Jack Stone minifigure and be horrified at what Lego decided to create for some horrible reason. But these Jack Stone minifigures are pretty hated in the Lego community. I actually loved them when I was like six years old. Looking back on that now, you know, obviously I was a dumb kid. I don't like these figures anymore, but I actually had a lot of Jack Stone sets, and I think I had a couple of these four Junior's Pirate sets. And these sets were you know, kind of like the four plus sets of today had very large pieces, very easy to build these weird figures, and shocker, they were all the same things. Pirate boats, rafts, islands, forts, oh my goodness. Even the four junior sets were the exact same tropes that we've seen from LEGO Pirates throughout this entire episode. And then we also did get Redbeard returning. It was his first not normal minifigure. Now Redbeard is a weird junior style Jack Stone minifigure. And you get Captain Redbeard's pirate ship. That, that was the name of the set. It was Captain Redbeard's pirate ship. You were starting to see the very steep decline in name of Lego pirate ships. They were so creative at first, and not even, you know, like a decade later, it's Captain Redbeard's pirate ship. They couldn't even give it an interesting name. And this set was very clearly somewhat inspired by the Black Sea Barracuda. It had similar sails, some similar colors, but it was still the kind of weird, awkward Four Juniors style. Let's stop talking about these four juniors pirate sets because I don't like talking about them. You probably don't like hearing about them. They're pretty stupid, but you guys want to hear an episode about Jack Stone? I could definitely talk for a while about how bizarre that theme is. So let me know if you want to hear an episode about Jack Stone. But now it's finally time to talk about the modern Lego pirate sets. So the year is 2009, and this is the first big normal system revival for Lego pirates. Castle just had a pretty big revival in 2007 that lasted for a few years and was very successful and Pirates gets its own revival in the year 2009. This is the pirate theme that like I think of when I think of Lego Pirates. I was still pretty young at the time. I was about I think 11 or 12 years old when these sets came out. I had a number of these sets. They're very good sets. Yeah, of course they do, you know, capitalize on these pirate tropes that we've repeated so many times throughout these episodes. So you can probably guess what these sets were, but these sets were very heavily influenced by the the mid 90s pirate sets. They had the British soldiers in the red coats. Now, a $10 set from this line was called Kraken Attackin'. That is one of the greatest names for a Lego set ever. 
that's such a such a fantastic name. I absolutely love the name Kraken Attackin. And it had a very unique raft build that used a lot of the two by two cylinder piece. It used a ton of those. Great raft build. And you might be like, wait, Lee, you said Lego Pirates are never fantasy sets, but this one comes with the Kraken. Well, the Kraken was actually just the normal Lego octopus piece that's been around for many years. It was not a unique piece in any way. It was just a normal Lego octopus piece. They called it a Kraken, probably just give it that dope name of Kraken Attackin', but it wasn't different or unique in any way, shape, or form. So it still fits under the category of somewhat grounded in reality pirate sets, although I don't think octopuses are attacking rafts all too often. For $20, we had Loot Island, which had a very unique tan base plate piece that actually kind of looked like an island, and I don't think this base plate piece has ever appeared in a Lego set again. Very unique base plate piece, very cool, rare, cool piece. And of course, this island, it was called Loot Island, it wasn't called Skull Island, but it had a skull, so it's essentially the Skull Island of this wave. For $40, we had a Shipwreck Hideout, which I thought was a really cool set. It kind of had like the back of the ship, and then it had a very cool bridge piece with a second section. I loved this set. This was like one of my favorite sets from this Pirates line, one of my favorite Pirates sets ever made. Really cool, underrated Shipwreck Hideout set. Then for $50, we had, of course, the Soldier fort that had a really nice modular style. I had this set as well. You could rearrange all the different sections of the fort. Very cool set. Really good. And honestly, while this set again is super repetitive and while this entire line is super repetitive, I think they hit all the highlights of Lego Pirates and they really perfected the designs. I think 2009 is probably the best wave of Lego Pirate sets ever, maybe besides the original wave 30 year, 20 years in the past at this point in 1989. And then for $100, we had Brick Beard's Bounty. Okay, few things to discuss with this set. One, Brick Beard? It's no longer Redbeard, but it is Redbeard. So Redbeard in this set, it, it is Redbeard. It looks exactly like him, which is just a, you know, a modern update of Redbeard, but his name has been changed to Brickbeard. I don't understand that, it's very odd. Obviously, I mean, I guess you could say his beard is made of bricks because his head is a Lego brick, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of weird they change it to brick beard because like, that isn't a name a pirate would have in real life. Red beard makes sense. Obviously it's a play on, you know, the famous pirate Edward Teach, AKA black beard, and it still is red beard. They just changed it to brick beard. Very weird, very odd name, but the brick beard's bounty set was a big pirate ship that, you know, drew some influence from the Black Sea Barracuda and other pirate sets. Brickbeard's Bounty is a slightly better name than the pirate ship that we got before that literally just didn't really have a name, but still not as creative as the pirate ships of old. And this set also introduced a new Lego shark piece that's been used a few times. It's a pretty rare Lego shark piece, but it's a cool piece because it could literally eat an entire minifigure. You could fit an entire figure inside this shark. Very cool piece. I love that shark piece. Now, in 2010, we got a direct-to-consumer set that I guess was more under the creator line, but it was technically a pirate set, the Imperial Flagship. And if you ask me, this Imperial Flagship is the best pirate set they've ever made. At the time, it's the biggest, 1,600 pieces, $180. And my dad, my dad is really into like flagships of this sort. So my dad actually got this set for himself and he still has it on display in his office. It's a beautiful, humongous ship, super, super cool design. And in my opinion, it's the best Lego pirate set ever made. Now, I will say I have not built the Barracuda base set. I, I ordered it, it hasn't come in the mail yet. Once it comes in the mail, I will build it, and maybe after building that, my opinions on this set will change. But as it stands right now, my personal favorite pirate set is the 2010 Imperial flagship. Now, Let's jump to the year 2015. 2015's an interesting year for LEGO because I kind of think 2015 was like one of the last years where there was still a fair number of unlicensed themes. Licensed themes are really starting to take over at this time, but we still had a fair number of new unlicensed themes. And of course, a, you know, quote unquote new, AKA a revival was a new wave of LEGO pirate sets. Now this was kind of a small wave. There's only five whole sets and then there was additional chess set, which was kind of interesting, but a good minifigure pack. 
And these sets were all the same tropes again. The soldiers, oddly, were back to their blue coats. They changed them from the red coats they'd been using for a very long time and went back to the blue coats they used in the original wave of LEGO Pirate sets way back in the day. The Brick Bounty comes back and it's the same kind of big ship, nothing unique or anything. And if I'm being completely honest, this 2015 Wave of Pirate sets is pretty bad. The, the sets are pretty much the same sort of deal as the 2009 sets, but all of them are smaller. They're all smaller designs, and it's just repetitive and boring, and they were worse than the 2009 sets, much smaller, definitely not as interesting. I only got two of the sets, from this wave, not a great wave, and that only lasted the one wave. Everyone completely forgot about it, and I think most people had kind of forgotten about that, you know, only coming out five years ago, and the pirate Lego theme in general. But that brings us to the year 2020, obviously, and we just got the Pirates of Barracuda Bay Lego Ideas set. Now, technically speaking, it's a Lego Ideas set. It's not a Lego Pirate set, it's a Lego Ideas set. And it actually differed a good bit from the fan submitted model. It's actually completely different. And this set is supposed to be kind of an homage to the original Lego Pirate sets. That's very obvious. The box art looks like the original Lego Pirates box art. And of course, it is a big shipwreck hideout. So it fits into those, you know, tropes that I've mentioned throughout this episode. But one of the coolest parts about this set is you can turn the shipwreck into the Black Sea Barracuda. And this is a direct remake. It is not inspired by, it is literally supposed to be the Black Sea Barracuda. You can turn this shipwreck into a modern day rendition of the iconic Black Sea Barracuda, which is super cool. And in addition, Redbeard is back. He, you know, he became Brickbeard for a while, but Redbeard is back, baby, and that's his name again. Redbeard, and this is now the biggest pirate set ever made. It has over 2,500 pieces and costs $200. It's a huge set. I am stoked to build it. I should be getting it here in the next few days, and I am really excited to put this epic set together. And this set got a lot of votes as the best pirate set of all time. It didn't win. The original Black Seas Barracuda won, which I think makes sense, but this set got a lot of votes. Is that recency bias? Probably, but it is still a pretty epic looking set, at least based on what I can see in the pictures, and I'll have to wait and make my own opinions when it finally, when I finally get it in the mail. So with the Pirates of Barracuda Bay set out of the way, that is it. That are, is all the Lego Pirate sets throughout the years. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you learned something about Lego Pirate today, and I am having a lot of fun making these Brickology episodes, and because I'm quarantined, and because of, you know, all this craziness going on in the world, Brickology will remain a weekly podcast for the time being. It's a lot of work, but it's something I'm enjoying doing. The results are starting to pay off. A lot more streams are coming in, which I'm super, super grateful for, which is fantastic. And before I let you guys go, please go check out my Patreon page that I mentioned before. You can support me over there. Also follow my Instagram page. I literally post daily content there. YouTube, I have some cool videos. Twitter as well, and like me on Facebook. And stay safe, stay clean wash your hands, remain distant from other people. And I hope to see you guys next time, hear from you guys again in the next episode of Brickology. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is Lego Leaf Future 9 saying goodbye. Peace out. Bye-bye, y'all.